We're getting ready to introduce our new beverage menu called the Bartender Brag Book. This will highlight and celebrate our 37-year history of Friday's bartenders being the best in the business. This brag book will help drive our sales of beer, wine, and cocktails with enticing pictures and descriptions. And this is an opportunity to really show our expertise to a whole new group of guests, so we really need to be on our game. This video is a refresher course for you to make sure that no detail is left open, and who knows, you might learn something new. So let's use this opportunity to sharpen our skills and to show everyone why Friday's bartenders are the best. Hi, my name is Mylon Olson. I'm a bartender at TGI Fridays in Addison, Texas. I've been with Fridays for 10 years. TGI Fridays is a pioneer not only in food, but also in drink. And today, we're going to talk about some things. First thing we want to talk about is we need to educate our guests for accuracy in the drinks that we make. It's important that in Texas, we get the exact same drink that we get in, say, New York. Upselling is what we're also going to be talking about. And we, when we upsell, we need to use adjectives like fresh, stout, cool, chill, relaxing, things like that. All right, today we're going to talk about beer and wine, the service and temperature, classic drinks, the build and chilled, ultimate drinks, ice cream drinks, and frozen. And we're also going to do some role plays to demonstrate different techniques that we use. So here we go. As this is the beginning of the video, it is also the beginning of a shift. Doesn't matter how long you've been here, you need to pour test. Now each count that we do is a quarter of an ounce. So an example, if I'm doing an ounce and a quarter, it's going to be a five count. In our pour testing, we are going to pour a quarter of an ounce, a half ounce, three quarters of an ounce, an ounce, ounce and a quarter, which is the money pour, ounce and a half, and two ounces. The two ounces probably being the most important because that's the biggest amount of liquor that's going across the bar. So to begin with, I'm gonna count with you, or you count with me, one count. Now on the, on the quarter ounce, it's important not to go all the way up because by the time we go up and back down, we're gonna have too much liquor in our tin. So I'm gonna just barely go up. On everything else, I'll have the bottle going straight up and down. One. Now I'm going to do the half ounce, and here the bottle will be going straight up and down. One, two. And you notice I cut when I say the last number, two. So I should already be cutting. Three quarters of an ounce. One, two, three. And finally, two ounces. Now on the two ounces, I count to four twice because there's an extra syllable at seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, let's see how I did. And the way that you read this is you have these two dashed lines on either side of the pour. And what that is, it's an eighth of an ounce difference, either low or high. So if I'm within these two lines, then I have a good pour. And looking over this, I'm a little bit high on a couple of them. So what that tells me is I have to speed up my count so that it will uh, lower that, not have as much liquid in there. Now it's very important that when you're pour testing that you get it right. And the reason why you need to get it right is for the, the quality of the drink. If any one liquor is poured incorrectly, it's going to totally affect the taste of the drink. And that's no bueno. The first thing we're going to talk about today is beer. And I don't know about you, but I love beer. So in order to have a great product at Friday's, we have to serve it correctly. And the way we do that is have cold beer. You can never have beer that is too cold. We sell a lot of beer here at Friday's, so it's important that we give a superior product to the guest. When we store the beer, it needs to be from 32 to 36 degrees in the cooler. When the beer comes in from the delivery truck, it is cold, we need to put it directly into the cooler. We never want to take it from the delivery truck, which is cold, to the storage, which is warm, and back to cold, because we'll get a deterioration of the beer. Now, like I said before, we have a ton of beer here at Friday's. So, when I'm selling beer, I like to sell the premiums, like the Fosters, the Sam Adams, the Bass, Guinness. Today, I've sold the Fosters to my guest. I know, pretty good, huh? So, when we do this, we always need to pour it into a pint. The reason we pour it into a pint is it releases the CO2 gases and it makes for a much better product. So I've got the glass tilted at 45 degrees. 
And as it comes up, I'm gonna get a nice head on my beer. Much better for the guest. And they're gonna take care of you in the end. Okay, I'm gonna do an example right now where I'm going to pour each one of these beers, one into a cold frosted glass and one into a room temperature glass, glass and I'm gonna let you see the difference in temperature. There's the room temperature glass. And there's the frosty. Just look at the two difference, the difference in these two. Okay, the temperature of this beer is 41 degrees. Unbelievable. The temperature of this one, 37. Do you see the difference that we have by pouring it into a chilled glass? Yeah. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is draft beer. Just like in bottled beer, we sell a ton of it. So, the same as bottled beer, we need to keep it in the cooler at 32 to 36 degrees. Never have beer too cold, okay? When the beer comes in from the truck, it's chilled. It needs to go directly into the cooler because if it sits out for any extended period of time, it's gonna get skunky, cloudy, and it's not gonna be a very good tasting beer for our guest. You like that? Now, as we're pouring this beer, we need to have the glass move up so that we get a nice three quarters of an inch of head. And there you go, a perfect beer. Now that you got my bit on beer, we're gonna talk about wine. When wine comes in, it is at room temperature. It can either go directly into dry storage where the temperature is below 70 degrees or your Chardonnays and White Zinfandels can go directly into the cooler. Now when we store it, it needs to be stored on its side so that the cork does not get dried out. The two enemies of wine are air and temperature. If it's too cold, it is bitter. If it's too warm, it could be flat. <laughs> we don't want flat tasting wine. Now air oxidizes it and it deteriorates the quality of the wine. Now we're gonna do a role play for the service of wine. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, thank you. Great, what can I get for you? Uh, just nailed down a business deal. We'd like a bottle of wine first. Oh, great, congratulations. What kind of wine would we like? We have Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet, or a Zinfandel. Uh, go for a white wine, please. White wine? I suggest the Candle Jackson. Very good Chardonnay. Fantastic. Great. Now, when I, once I get the wine, what I'm going to do, place the glasses in front of them, and also I'm gonna ask the person that ordered if this is indeed the bottle of wine that they ordered. Does this look like the bottle of wine you ordered? Certainly. Okay. Now, I'm gonna open the bottle of wine. Now, the Kendall Jackson doesn't have the, uh, the tin around it. If it did, I would simply cut that off using my knife on the other side by rotating in it round and pull it off. Place that back in there. Place your wine cork in the middle and twist down. Pull this up and gently pull the cork off. And place this down and take the cork off and present the cork to the guest that ordered it. And I'm now gonna pour a little bit for the guest to taste. How's that taste? Fantastic. Great. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a half glass for the guest of the first person or any other guest and then finish pouring a half glass for the person that ordered the drink. The reason why we do that is to ensure that we have multiple glasses out of one bottle. Now the storage of our chilled wines needs to be a brick at the table side. So I'm simply gonna take the wine and place it in the brick. Now the storage of the brick needs to be a specific way. What we do is we take ice and water, fill it to the top, let it soak for three to five minutes, and then we dump the ice and put it into the chill. That is the service of wine.
All right, now we're gonna get into classic cocktails because that's why I became a bartender because we're actually gonna mix drinks. What classic cocktails are, are your martinis, your Manhattans, your Cosmopolitan, things that have been around for a while that Fridays have served a lot over the years. Hey, what's going on? Nothing much. Long day of work, ready to relax. Hey, you came to the right spot. What can I get for you? Let's get a Manhattan today. A Manhattan. Now that I've determined what drink he wants, I need to ask some questions. On a Manhattan, we need to ask if it's up or on the rocks, if it's sweet, dry, or perfect, and what kind of bourbon he wants. I'm going to give him three choices. Okay, a Manhattan, do you want that up or on the rocks? Let's get that on the rocks today. Okay, and do you want it sweet, dry, or perfect? Let's get it sweet. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And what kind of bourbon would you like? We have Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Wild Turkey. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I tell you what, Jack Daniels makes a great Manhattan. Well, let's go with that. Then. Go with the Manhattan, Jack Daniels? All right. That is how you upsell a Manhattan or any of the other classic cocktails that we have. So a build, I'm gonna take my goblet, fill it to the top with ice, grab my Jack Daniels, pour two ounces of liquor in there. I determined that it was a sweet Manhattan, so I've got a half an ounce of sweet vermouth and I'm just gonna put a touch of Angostura bitters. The garnish on a Manhattan is one speared cherry. So I'll lay that on top, put a sip straw down, napkin, and there's your Manhattan. All right, the next drink we're gonna make is the Cosmopolitan. The Cosmopolitan, we need to chill the glass first. So I'm gonna put ice in the glass and then I'm gonna fill it with water and let that set while I mix the drink. All right, ready? Now, if you're looking at the recipe, it's an ounce and a quarter of vodka. A half an ounce of Cointreau. Half an ounce of cranberry, very important. A squeeze of lime, and then we discard the lime. This is a chilled drink, so I've got to put it on ice, put my mixing tin on there. Okay, now I need to discard my water as this is on here. I'm going to go ahead and crack the egg and just pour the drink in the glass. Getting it all out because we don't want to cheat the guests. Something else very important is we have the garnish, which is a lemon twist. We twist, and on the rind side, follow it around the glass and drop it in the martini. Now, since this does not have ice, we do not put a straw in it. And there is your Cosmopolitan. Moving on from beer, wine, and classic cocktails, we're now going to talk about Ultimates. We're very excited about Ultimates here at Friday's because it's a great quality drink for the guest. And what I mean by that is it's better liquors, better tasting, and more volume. For an example, the margarita. Instead of your well tequila, you get Jose Cuervo Gold. Instead of triple sec, you get Grand Gala and Cointreau. All ultimates are made in either a tin or into a blender, with the exception of the Bloody Mary. And while we're talking about Bloody Mary, it's important to ask the guest if they want a spicy Bloody Mary or a regular Bloody Mary. If they want it spicy, we make it with the Buffalo Mary Mix. Now when we're talking about in the tin, we put it with ice and that ensures that the drink is cold and it blends all of the ingredients together. Hey, how are you doing today? Doing well, thanks. Great. What can I get for you? Uh, can I get a margarita? Margarita. Would you like that regular or ultimate? Uh, what is an ultimate? An ultimate is a blend of our uh, finer liquors. It's got our premium tequila, which is our Jose Cuervo Gold. And instead of uh, triple sec, we have Cointreau and Grand Gala. Hook me up with an ultimate, please. Okay. Would you like that on the rocks or frozen? Uh, on the rocks, please. On the rocks and salt? No salt? Definitely salt. Yeah, I gotta like the salt. All right. That's how we sell to an ultimate. We don't always want to assume that the guest is gonna get an ultimate when they order a margarita. 
From my guest, I've already determined that it's an ultimate margarita with salt and on the rocks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my glass, put salt on it, and fill it to the rim with ice. Grab my tins. Now here, I'm gonna put ice in the tin per the recipe. Grab my Jose Cuervo Gold, ounce and a half, my Cointreau and my Grand Gala, a half ounce, and I like to put it in one hand because it's faster and it looks good. Two ounces of the margarita mix. Two ounces of water. Take your mixing tin, slap it on, shake it vigorously, crack it open, and strain the ice. And if I have measured correctly, I have the perfect margarita. And remember, no drink is complete without a fresh garnish. It's all about the presentation, style, and substance of the drink. Here is your ultimate margarita. Now that we're done with ultimates, we're gonna talk about blender drinks. Ice cream drinks are frozen. People come to Friday specifically for an ice cream drink, and it's a drink that they can't get just anywhere. So today, I'm gonna to make a Friday's freeze and, and show you some of the blender techniques that we use to ensure that the drink is great. As with the Friday's freeze, and like all the other drinks, we are going to put the liquids in first. What that does is it draws the solids down there and you get a nice creamy consistency. So for the Friday's freeze, I've got a sure dot smeared off vodka and I'm going ounce and a quarter. Three ounces of orange juice. Two scoops of orange sherbet. And half a scoop of crushed ice. Now before I turn the blender on, I'm gonna give you some basics of the blender. We always put the top on the blender, start it on low, never start it on high. If you start it on high, you tend to uh, start burning out the blades and also the motor. That's not good. Once you turn it on, we're gonna look on it. If it's not blending the way you want it to, go ahead and turn it on to high, or if you don't feel that it's coming all the way down, go ahead and turn off the blender, let it settle, turn it back on. We never want to shake the blender. So it's on low, turning it on. Now I'm looking at it and it's blending okay so I don't need to turn it off. I will put it on high though. Once I put it on high, before I turn it off, I need to put it back on low. So I got it back on low, and I know that it's done blending when I don't have a hole in the middle and the sides fold over and it forms a baby's butt. Slap it on, shake it vigorously, crack it open and strain the ice. And if I have measured correctly, I have the perfect margarita. And remember, no drink is complete without a fresh garnish. It's all about the presentation, style, and substance of the drink. Here is your ultimate margarita. Now that we're done with ultimates, we're gonna talk about blender drinks. Ice cream drinks are frozen. People come to Friday specifically for an ice cream drink, and it's a drink that they can't get just anywhere. So today, I'm gonna to make a Friday's freeze and, and show you some of the blender techniques that we use to ensure that the drink is great. 
As with the Friday's Freeze, and like all the other drinks, we are going to put the liquids in first. What that does is it draws the solids down there and you get a nice creamy consistency. So for the Friday's Freeze, I've got a sure dot smeared off vodka and I'm going ounce and a quarter. Three ounces of orange juice. Two scoops of orange sherbet. and half a scoop of crushed ice. Now before I turn the blender on, I'm gonna give you some basics of the blender. We always put the top on the blender, start it on low, never start it on high. If you start it on high, you tend to uh, start burning out the blades and also the motor. That's not good. Once you turn it on, we're gonna look on it. If it's not blending the way you want it to, go ahead and turn it on to high or if you don't feel that it's coming all the way down, go ahead and turn off the blender, let it settle, turn it back on. We never wanna shake the blender. So it's on low, turning it on. Now I'm looking at it and it's blending okay so I don't need to turn it off. I will put it on high though. Once I put it on high, before I turn it off, I need to put it back on low. So I got it back on low, and I know that it's done blending when I don't have a hole in the middle and the sides fold over and it forms a baby's butt. I'm gonna go ahead and get my glass ready. Whipped cream. Pour it into the center of the drink. You might need to tap gently on the side to get the last little bit. And I'm gonna pour it so that it's a dime window. It should be an inch and a half to two inches of whipped cream. And we're gonna finish the drink out with a nice perky stemmed cherry. And here is your Friday's freeze. We have a lot of drinks. A guest might come in and give us a drink that we're not familiar with. So what we do is we need to familiarize ourselves with our manual. We have in that manual formulas. So if they come in and say they want a two liquor juice drink, we know how to make it. Now we can't talk about alcohol without bringing up RAS, Responsible Alcohol Service and Sales. You need to re-familiarize yourself with that. And remember, when working, you need to have fun. I'm gonna go ahead and get my glass ready. Whipped cream. Pour it into the center of the drink. You might need to tap gently on the side to get the last little bit. And I'm gonna pour it so that it's a dime window. It should be an inch and a half to two inches of whipped cream. And we're gonna finish the drink out with a nice perky stemmed cherry. And here is your Friday's freeze. We have a lot of drinks. 
a guest might come in and give us a drink that we're not familiar with. So what we do is we need to familiarize ourselves with our manual. We have in that manual formulas. So if they come in and say they want a two liquor juice drink, we know how to make it. Now we can't talk about alcohol without bringing up RAS, Responsible Alcohol Service and Sales. You need to re-familiarize yourself with that. And remember, when working, you need to have fun.